Welcome back to our course Digital Design with Verilog. In today's class, we will continue our discussion on minimization of switching function and specifically we will talk about various properties of this minimization procedure. This part of the lecture is prepared from the chapter 4 of Kohavi's book. As we discussed in the previous class that uh, once we given a switching function in the form of sum of product, our objective is to uh, find a minimum equivalent form of that function and primarily we try to reduce the number of min terms and also the number of product terms. Okay. So, as we have seen that uh, the number of product terms uh, impact on the area and uh, delay as well as the number of literals involved in the min terms also uh, impact on area and delay. But since the uh, impact of the number of product term has more on the delays, so we primary objective to represent the function using minimum number of product term first and if there are multiple such representation is possible, we will select the one which has minimum number of literals okay. and that particular process can be done using Carnot map, right. So, in the Carnot map specifically uh, uh, the mean terms are uh, organized in a tabular form where two consecutive or uh, successive mean terms are differ by a single bit. So, that actually enables this uh, combining process, right. So, the combining process is done using this formula which is basically says that if there are two mean terms say a x y z and you have x bar y n z. So, this y z is common which is a and you have x here and it is x bar here. So, you will basically can combine these two into just a because you can take x and x bar common. Right. So, it is basically y z plus x bar which is basically y z. So, just applying this rule uh, what is happening two product term reduced to one product term and uh, uh, two re product term reduced to one product term and uh, six literals is reduced to two literals. Okay. So, this is the uh, process of minimizing the uh, switching function. Uh, and this is done by a uh, Carnot map where the idea is that whatever the product term available you just put one in the uh, table in those positions and then if you club two consecutive one this will take two basically uh, effectively do the same process what I explained here where two product term will reduce to one product term and since I am combining two uh, one together one literal will be reduced right. For example, here x is removed right x and x bar is removed. So, the, our objective is basically cover all the one in this table with minimum number of cubes, each cube result in one product term. So, our objective is to cover all this one with minimum number of cubes and uh, with minimum number of literals and then adds large cube as possible, right. The larger cube means minimum literals, right, lesser literals, okay. So, for example, here uh, if we take this two cubes this will uh, represent this function in terms of this. Okay. So, if you, similarly if you have a bigger uh, say 4 variables instead of 3 variables and the variables are w x y z and in this case uh, the mean terms present in this functions are this. So, we put 1 corresponding to those mean terms and then I can combine this 4 mean term because they are consecutive. So, since I am combining 4 mean terms here, so this will 2 variable will be reduced. So, I will get an uh, may product term of two variables right and this is corresponding to x and y bar right. So, uh, this is basically x and y bar. Similarly, I can combine this 4 and this will result in w x and then I can also combine this 2 then this will result in w y bar z bar. And since with this 3 product term uh, 3 cube I cover all the ones. So, in my minimal expression I have basically 3 product term and uh, this is the minimal expression. Okay. So, this process is being done, but what is happening internally let us try to understand. Okay. So, to discuss that let us first introduce the concept of implicant. Okay. So, if you have two functions say f and g okay, which basically maps the same variable which is say x 1 to x n boolean variables and that is mapped to 0 or 1. Right. So, if you have a set is x 1 to to x n that maps to 0 and 1 right. And there is another function which also maps this variable x 1 x 2 to x n 
uh, to 0 and 1 right this is a binary function or switching function ok. Then I will say this function f cover g if wherever this function f maps the value to 1 g also does the same right. So, if I take an example say if you take the example of say f which is say x plus y ok. So, if f is mapping x and y to 0 and 1 ok and so it means basically it is x y bar plus x y plus x bar y right. So, effectively it is this and say you take the function which is say only x y ok. So, that means basically this is OR gate and this is AND gate. So, now if you think about uh, the possible values is 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 right. So, in this possible values for x y is this and since this is x or y. So, it will map this to 0, this to 1, this to 1, this to 1 right this is your f and g is only x y. Uh, so, this 0 0 will be mapped to 0, 0 1 will be mapped to 0, 1 0 will be mapped to 0 and 1 1 will be mapped to 1 right this is your g function. You can see that wherever g is 1 f is also mapped the same variable to 1. So, then I can say that f cover g ok. So, this is covered and if g is a mean term or a product term which is the case in my case then I will say g implies f ok. So, here in our my example g actually implies f ok. Now, what about prime implicant? The prime implicant is basically a product term or an implicant which is covered by f ok and such that if I delete one more literal from this prime implicant p the resultant product term is not covered by f ok. So, then I will say that particular product term is a prime implicant ok it is a special kind of implicant. If you take the example of this one so here I will say this is also a prime implicant of f this is also a prime implicant of f this is also prime implicant of f because if you try to remove from this term say x bar y if you try to remove y then this x bar will not uh, imply f because that will uh, be a different function ok. So, similarly you cannot also remove y x bar and then y will not imply this ok. So, same example follows in my case also because here this x y also a prime implicant of g this g is also a prime implicant of f ok. So, if this is the case then I will say this these are the prime implicant ok this x bar y x z y bar z bar they are the prime implicant. So, let us take one concrete example. So, uh, think about this a function f which has the mean term 0 1 uh, 5 7 8 9 13 15 and if I put those values into the Carnot map they will look like this right these are the ones this this is 0 this is 4 this is 5 this is 7 this is 8 this is 9 right this is 9 and then this is 13 and this is 15 ok. Now, if you try to find out the prime implicants and you can you can understand that whenever you uh, basically combine this mean term in Carnot map they will basically give a implicant ok. So, for example, if we just combine these two product term I will get w bar y bar and z bar right. Similarly, if I combine these two this I will get w x bar y bar right. Similarly, if I combine this four I will get x z ok. So, these are all prime implicants ok. Why? Because you cannot reduce this product term further that means, in the terms of Carnot map I cannot combine more ones and I cannot create a larger cube uh, in this particular table right. So, this is the largest possible cube and each largest possible cube is basically nothing but a prime implicant. On the other hand if you consider this one, this one this is nothing but x, y and z right. So, this is an implicant ok, but not prime implicant this is not a prime implicant. 
Similarly, this one uh, which is uh, x and then y bar z right this is y bar z and x. So, this is also an implicant right because these two will be covered by the actual function because I am obtaining this particular smaller product term from by combining the pro product term or the mean terms of the function itself, but these two can be combined further right. So, this is basically combined by this. So, this is not the uh, prime implicant, but this is an implicant. So, what we understood uh, here that in the Carnot map uh, we are effectively uh, identifying the prime implicants, not the implicants right. We try to find out the larger cubes ok. So, what are the other cubes possible here? So, if I combine correctly, so th there are 3 already marked here. There are uh, other prime implicants are like this right. So, this is one prime implicant, this is also one prime implicant. Right. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 this is also a prime implicant. So, there are 6 prime implicant is total possible for this and each of these cases uh, uh, you cannot uh, get a bigger cube uh, here right. So, these 6 are the prime implicants for this particular function ok. So, now uh, let us try to uh, correlate that e, e, e redundant sum of product expression with prime implicants. If you remember in Carnot map example, uh, effectively why what you told that we try to identify the irredundant expressions. And what is irredundant expressions? Is basically a sum of product expressions uh, from which no term or literal can be deleted without altering the logic value. It means that I cannot reduce that expression further, right? And prime implicant says that it's a product term which is covered by a function f and if I try to delete any literal from p, then this new product term is not a prime implicant right. So, this is not covered by f. So, if I combine these two effectively what I am saying is that that e redundant expression is obtained by combining the prime implicants right. So, that is very important that every e redundant sum of product expression is equivalent to uh, which is equivalent to f is a union of prime implicants of f. So, this effectively suggests the uh, process that we are actually following in Carnot map that if we can identify all the prime implicants right. The first objective to identify all the prime implicants of a function ok. And once you find out this prime implicants you select a subset of them that covers all the one right. So, if I just now summarize the two steps of the minimization of switching function. The first step is basically you identify set of all prime implicants and you can combine the term using this particular uh, formula repeatedly and you try to find out the largest one right the prime implicant. So, that you cannot combine further you can grow the cube further and you will identify all the prime implicants. And then this minimal expression can be obtained by selecting the minimal set of prime implicants a subset of the prime implicants that covers all the product term where the number of product term that I have selected is minimum and then number of literals is also minimum right. So, this is the overall process that we are doing in Carnot map without knowing this process ok. So, in this example I have already explained that in this particular example I have uh, total 1, 2, 3, uh, 4 there is one more here uh, and this right. So, total 6 prime implicants right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ok. And I have already mentioned that this is not a prime implicant right. This is not a prime implicant, this is not a prime implicant because they are uh, they can be covered by a bigger cube ok. So, effectively I have 6 prime implicants in my example. So, this way you can actually uh, identify prime implicants using Carnot map right. There is no confusion here. Next step is uh, deriving the minimal expression. So, for uh, deriving minimal expression we uh, come up with two terminology one is essential prime implicant and the other one is redundant prime implicant ok. Let us uh, explain them. So, uh, what is uh, essential prime implicant? So, it specifically says that and prime implicant is essential if it covers some mean term uh, which is not covered by anybody else 
okay so that means there are certain ones which is only covered by that pin term okay so if you take this example the same example that i was discussing so if you see here the total there are six prime implicant as i mentioned this is one more prime implicant this is one more prime implicant and four are already marked so among them the only prime implicant this is covering this two one which is not covered by anybody else okay so this is essential prime implicant on the other hand if you see the other prime implicant for example if you take this one right it is covered by two prime implicants if you consider this one this is also covered by two prime implicants this one and this one if you think about this one which is also covered by this prime implicant and this prime implicant right so similarly for all other one so that means for all other ones are covered by at least two prime implicants so then those prime implicants are not essential but whereas this one which is effectively is xz xz which is an essential prime implicant because it's covered two ones which is not covered by anybody else right so what one thing we understood that once we have to cover this ones right uh, with cubes essential prime implicant must be there right because you cannot remove that essential prime implicant because you have to cover all ones and this particular implicants covering some one which is not covered by anybody else so i always need them so that is why this particular uh, prime implicants are called essential prime implicants so for any minimal expressions or redundant expression i have to always include this essential prime implicants okay so uh, i have taken two examples where uh, the function uh, of four variables are which have the mean term this 4 5 8 12 13 14 and 15 and if we map them into a map the ones are noted in this particular function in this case there are three uh, prime implicants right so this is one prime implicant because we cannot grow it further it is covered four ones this is another prime implicant which is again covering four mean terms and I cannot expand it further and this is one prime implicant okay it is again I cannot expand it further so it is basically if I uh, write these three uh, product terms or the prime implicant this is w x x y bar and w y bar z bar okay so here if I try to identify how many of them are essential prime implicants we can see that all of them are prime essential prime implicants why because if you see here this particular prime implicants is covering this two one which is not covered by anybody else so this one is essential prime implicant right this one is covering this two one which is not covered by anybody else so this is also an essential prime implicant about the third one here also this one is also covering one one which is not covered by any other prime implicant so this one is also an essential prime implicant right so what i'm trying to say is that in this example all are essential prime implicants so if uh, in a particular function if uh, all the prime implicants become essential prime implicants what does this mean it means that i have to include all of them uh, in a minimal expression and since there is only one way you can include all of them so this this has a always unique minimal expression okay so whenever uh, you have all prime implicants are essential you will have unique minimal expression right so in my this case i have an i will get a unique minimal expression i do not have multiple such minimal expression okay Whereas you take a function of three variables x, y, z, which have the mean terms 0, 2, 3, 5, 4, 5, and 7, and for this, the prime implicants are stored in this uh, table. And there are how many prime implicants? 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So there are 6 prime implicants, right? if i mark them this is 1 this is 1 2 
this is 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay. How many of them are essential? The answer is 0, none of them are essential. Right? So, none of them are essential, no essential prime implicants. Why? Because here every one is covered by at least two prime implicants. You think about this one, it is covered by two prime implicants. You cover, think about this one, it is covered by this one and this one. If you think about this one, this is covered by this prime implicant and this prime implicant. If you consider this one, it is covered by this prime implicant and this one. If you cover, think about this one, it is covered by this prime implicant and this one. Right. So, every one is covered by two prime implicants. So, none of them are essential. So, to derive this minimal expression or irredundant expression for this function, we need to choose uh, logically uh, or such that uh, that has minimum number of productum and you will have multiple uh, minimal expression. Okay. So, you will not have a unique minimal expression. Now, uh, so we have already discussed this essential prime implicants. Now, let us talk about redundant prime implicants. So, there are certain uh, prime implicants which is not useful, okay? although they are prime implicant, uh, but they are not useful. Why? If you think about that coverage, the essential prime implicants has to be selected. right? So, now if you have a map where uh, you choose all the essential prime implicant and you find out one prime implicant which is covering certain ones they are already covered by some essential Im prime implicant. What does it mean? It means that that prime implicant will never be added to any of the um, minimal expression because uh, that particular prime implicant uh, the ones that covers in uh, that are there in the prime implicants they are already been covered by somebody else. Okay? So, to give an example uh, if you take this uh, uh, truth table where the uh, mean terms are uh, shown by 1 and you can clearly see that uh, there are 5 prime implicants here. right? So, this is 1, this is the second one, this is the third one, this is uh, the fourth one and this is the middle one is the fifth one. So, there are 5 prime implicants. Right? So, they are given by here. Right? There are 5 prime implicants. Now, among this uh, what are the essential prime implicants? this is an essential prime implicants because it is covering this one which is not covered by anybody else. This is an essential prime implicants. So, because it is covering this one which is only by this, this particular prime implicants cover this one uniquely. So, this is an also essential prime implicants and similarly this one is also essential prime implicants because of this one. Okay. So, now you see here there are uh, 4 plus 4 8 uh, ones mean terms and these four essential prime implicants actually cover all of them. So, then the middle one is covering four ones which is the biggest one biggest prime implicant, but all of them all of the ones are already covered by other essential prime implicant. So, this is redundant. So, whenever we identify we try to find the minimal expression we have to choose essential prime implicant. So, I will choose all the essential prime implicants and then I will remove all the redundant uh, prime implicants and then the for, from the rest of the prime implicants I have to choose a subset. Okay? So, that is the kind of process. Uh, so, now I think uh, the overall process is very much clear and which is summarized in this uh, flow, flow chart. So, your first objective is to identify all essential prime implicants that is needed. Okay? using Carnot map or any other map. So, you basically first find out all prime implicants and then you basically select all the essential prime implicants. Okay. Then you remove uh, all the uh, prime implicants which is redundant. Okay. So, that means you have selected uh, some of the uh, prime implicants, you have removed some of them and there are some more left. right? So, that means if this is the overall prime implicant set, this may be your essential prime implicant, this may be redundant prime implicant and this is the set from where I have to select. So, I will select it, I will reject them or remove and from here you select a subset such that you cover all the 
one term right. So, if this set is null if this is null set then you have a unique expression right if the set derived in step 1 cover all the min terms then we have a unique minimal expression. If not you select additional prime implicant from this set okay, uh, such that f is covered completely and uh, the total number of uh, prime implicants and the size of the prime implicants are minimal. Okay. So, this is effectively is being done in Karnomav and in next class we are going to talk about a method called coin McCloskey method which uh, does this more systematically and that method can be automated easily and also it is scalable for larger number of variables. Okay. So, we will discuss coin McCloskey method in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.